Lord. You have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons in one God, now and forever. Amen. Right now we have the scripture reading. We read by our sister singing. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 to 14. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Hey, good morning, church. Well, last week was the last sermon on the sermon series, Building Blocks. This table... Yes, this table summarizes the Building Blocks sermon series. The table can be found in the bulletin. This weekend, we begin a new sermon series. Like the previous series, we follow the church season and the passages from the lectionary. Now we are in the season after Pentecost, commonly known as the second period of ordinary time. It begins on today, 4th of June, and continue to advance. The purpose of this season is to support the church and her members in living out the gifts and calling that they discover during the Lent and the Easter season and commission on the day of Pentecost. As such, the focus for our new sermon series will be Christian living. There are four parts to this new series. Today, we begin with part one, and we will be focusing on family reunion. Family reunion is important. Why? Because God uses family throughout history to enact His will. Here, I'm not playing down the single. Singers too have a role in God's family and in their own family. We kick off this family union sermon series by having a family service last Saturday. June is a time for family reunions where many families who go out or tour during school vacation. For some of us, family reunions are fun and fulfilling. For others, they are uncomfortable or even painful. We all have some dysfunction in our families. We all have stories that we would rather not tell. In this family reunion series, we are focusing stories found in the book of Genesis. In this story, we discover that God chosen family, those first generation of Israel, had struggles, secrets, sibling rivalries, and even 
tracks of murder. And as we explore this rich and ancient story, we see how God works through and in spite of family dysfunction to bring about God's purposes for the world. And not only that, we too find hope for our own families. All in all, there will be 11 sessions. This series runs from today to August 20th. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about family in all its many dimensions and forms. Now let us commit this time to God in prayer as we look into God's Word this morning. Father Lord, we pray for your presence as we look into your Word. May your Word, Lord, encourage and guide us to follow your ways as we journey with one another, especially with our family members. So Lord, we commit this time to you. Guide us and lead us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Most people view the Trinity a teaching of the church, but with no applications. It is just a head knowledge thing. And that is not true. The doctrine of Trinity is very, very important. Why? Because it shapes our lives. As we look at who God is, we are able to see how we are called to live. There are many truths in the doctrine of Trinity that shapes our life. For example, since man was made in the image of God, and if we want to bear the image of God properly, we must accurately know who God is. And therefore, we must know about the Trinity. Today, I want to cover another teaching of the Trinity that is applicable to our sermon series and set the tone, set the foundation for the rest of the sermons in this new series. And that is our model for family. Family comes from the Trinity. So what does the Trinity teach us about family. Before I share on that, first we need to understand the Trinity. What is the Trinity? The word Trinity is not found in the Bible. However, it is a theological term that is used to express a teaching, a truth that is clearly seen throughout the Scripture. Three persons, but only one God. For example, our scripture passage, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Another passage is also our scripture reading today that we are familiar with. It says that, to one another at the end of a gathering or a non-Holy Communion service, the grace, which is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, that says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There are many more Bible verses that teach us about the Trinity. Obviously, there is no way we can fully understand the Trinity. But God has given us enough information to know that He does exist in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you want to have a good summary of what the Bible teaches about the Trinity, the best document I have found is the Nicene Creed, which we recited to affirm our faith during our Holy Communion service. If you want to attend a course on Trinity, the best course I have found is the Alpha course. And the content and the structure of the Alpha course is based on the Nicene Creed. So what does the Trinity teach us about family? 
The first thing the Trinity teaches us about family is that people need people. In other words, humans are made to live within community and to have a meaningful love relationship with other humans. Why do we know this? Because we are made in the image of God. God has assisted for eternity within a love relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And since we are made in His image, we should not be surprised that humans are made to live within community. So, when we have a desire for friends, for family, or even for a spouse, this is a godly desire. Of course, we can idealize this relationship. If we want them more than God Himself, then we are in big trouble. That is a sin. But the desire for a relationship is not a sin. It is good. God make us this way. If we isolate ourselves, we are actually harming ourselves. People will make for relationship because we were made in the image of a triune God. Another important truth that we learned about relationship from the Trinity is that roles within family is good. There are many roles in all human relationship between each other. This is seen most clearly in the family. One common lie that ruins family is that different roles between men and women means one gender is more superior than the other. This is unbreakable and will sabotage the health of a relationship between a man and a woman. From the Trinity, we see that roles in relationship do not devalue one person over the other. There are different roles in human relationship because there are different roles in the Trinity. This is a large topic. So, for the sake of summary, the Bible teaches us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all equal in deity, but they function differently in a relationship to one another. In short, the Father appoints what happened, the Son accompanies the Father's will, and the Holy Spirit applies what the Son has accomplished to human. For example, the Father planned for Jesus to accompany the Gospel. Jesus accomplished the gospel. And the Holy Spirit applies the gospel work to our life when He dwells within us at the moment of our conversion. So, what is my point? Just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are of equal importance and are all fully God, they do function in different roles within their relationship towards one another. And therefore, we should not be surprised that since men and women are made in the image of God, they too are of equal importance and are fully image bearers. But they are to function different roles within their relationship towards one another. When we expand this concept to a family, this will imply that father has his role in the family mothers too, and as well as the children. We will explore these roles further in the next few weeks in our sermon series. There are many more truths that the Trinities can teach us about relationship in the family. One of the most important truths the Trinity teaches us about relationship in the family is that unity and love must always go together. Unity and love must go together. The oneness of God and the love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not separate. God's love unifies. 
And because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are perfectly one, they can love each other perfectly. And therefore, if we hope to emulate the love of God within the Trinity, in our relationship with one another in the family, we must seek the love that produces unity. God loves us with His presence. He loves us by uniting us with Himself. And likewise, without unity and harmony in our family relationship with one another, we cannot express the love of Christ to one another. So in the context of a Christian family, we must seek to imitate the image of God by being united with one another through God's love. The essential truth of God's as revealed in the Trinity reminds us that we not only connected deeply to God, but we also connected deeply to one another in our family. Just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are connected, so we are connected together in our family. Each member of the family has a different role to play and unique talents to share in the family. So it doesn't mean that the mother has to cope all the time. The father can cope. Some fathers can cope better than, than the mother. But we are all unified in holy relationship. The Trinity reminds us that we are not to be alone in the world. Sad to say, in the modern world, it is very easy to stare at a computer all the time or communicate with others solely via email, WhatsApp, and other electronics platform. The temptation to keep our yearbook in and shut the rest of the world out is a strong one. But we, who were created in the image and the likeness of the triangle God, were created for community. And God has specially put us in a family. So, treasure the relationship in our family. The teaching of the Trinity also reminds us that success in life is measured by our investment in horizontal relationship. To invest, it involves committing energy, time, and money into something for a beneficial purpose. The most common investments are the financial. But today, God wants us to examine investment towards family relationship. Humans are all products of relationship. Man is a relational being. God did not create man to live in isolation. And this is why God created Eve for Adam. I've discovered that if people are not on my heart, they are on my nerves. If we do not have our children in our heart, they get on our nerves. If we do not have our parents in our heart, they get on our nerves. If we do not have our spouse in our heart, guess who gets on our nerves? The reason so many families struggle is that family members are reacting to each other from their mind rather than their heart. When your mother says, I feel depressed, Listen to her. It is the right thing to do. When a father says, I don't feel this is the right thing to do, we ought to do it this other way. Listen to him. And when your son says, I don't feel like going to church, listen to him or don't listen to him. I know I'm tracking on a sensitive ground, we must still listen to him with discernment. One of the parents' chief responsibility is to train our children to be worshippers. 
And bring our children to church, whether they like it or not, is an essential act of discipleship. St. John Chapel may not seem exciting, but when God's people worship together in spirit and in truth, we obey God the Father, have fellowship with Christ, and in one spirit, we all pursue all that makes for peace and build up a common life with one another in God's family. When parents commit to weekly faithfulness in, in attending church services, we teach our children, young or old, that there's nothing more important for their soul. Heart love begins with understanding why someone feels the way they do. Ask questions and then listen. Hear the hurt. Look for the problems. Know what irritates our father, our mother, our children, and our siblings. We need to understand the moods of the people closest to us, why they act the way they do. If we care, we will be aware. How do we love our family members that we find them unlovable, even when we do understand them and even understand their mood? Our natural kind of love cannot do it. We need a supernatural kind of love. Human's love wears up, dries up, and dies after some time. The only kind of love that lasts, in spite of heartache and difficulty in tough circumstances, is God's love, the affection of Christ, Jesus. So how do we get this kind of love? You are right. The Trinity. God's love is not something we generate. It is something that is Pour into us, pour into our life by the Holy Spirit as we let God live in us day by day, as we type on all the divine resources available to us to express, to live from the inside out in words and in deed, to express our love to them. Today, God wants us to examine our investment, our investment towards relationship. Who is in our mind? Parents? Father? Mother? Children? Brothers? Sisters? Who is in our mind? Some of us who, whose parents, children or siblings are still non-believers. The love that God's power in us must find expression in our reaching out to them in the ways available to us. Witnessing to them is part of how God bless us, letting us to be a conduit of God's grace to them. The doctrine of Trinity shapes our life. As we look at who God is, we are able to see how we are called to live in relationship with one another, particularly with our family members. In conclusion, let's be filled with a fresh wonder at the depth and richness of the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we, as believers, have been called to be in relationship with our family members, to share God's love with them and with them. And let the Trinity shape our living so that we may share more of God's perfect love with an imperfect world daily. Let us pray. Let us just pause, just allow the word to minister to us. God's word today challenges us to put our investment in the right place. Invest in our relationship with our family members. Connect with our family members in love. Let us be a conduit of God's grace and love to our family members.
Let's pause and just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Father God, we thank you that you live within us, shaping and filling us with the affection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that may your grace flow out of everything that we do to live together in our family. So, Lord, we ask for your guidance. Pray the Lord that we will be very sensitive, Lord, to our family members. Help us to understand them. And most importantly, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you help us to connect with them. Say, so, Lord God, that we can share your love with them as well. We pray, Lord, that you will use us as a channel of your peace and your love. So, Lord God, that they, they too can experience you, Lord, in a very special way. So, once again, we commit our life to you. Help us, Lord, to continue to focus on you. So, guide us and lead us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.